So I'm from Toronto Mesh, and I want to share with you a bit about the projects we've been working on. And first, I want to point out that a lot of this work was done by uh, Hamish Coleman, uh, who's not physically based in Toronto, and also Yoko over there. Uh, the title of the talk is Peer-to-Peer -peer Applications on a Mesh Network. So what does that mean? A mesh network is uh, a network where you relay messages through friends. Um, and in an encrypted mesh network, you're relaying messages through friends you don't necessarily have to trust. Um, so traditional mesh networks follow this model where um, we have a we have a mesh uh, infrastructure uh, that's, that's, uh, that's co-owned, it's uh, owned by the community because you're basically pointing antennas to one another. Uh, but in order to access the internet, we, we have exit nodes to the internet. Uh, and usually that's served by some ISP. Uh, so as you can see in here, uh, we would traverse the community through that mesh network and at some point, uh, we go through the ISP links, and then we fetch the web content from, uh, from uh, so one of our centralized services, uh, such as like watching a YouTube video or going to Google. Um, <clears throat> I'm particularly interested in the model um, where the content also is distributed within the mesh network. So you don't necessarily need an exit node. Uh, the content is uh, located among your peers, the same links, the same relaying nodes that are helping you relay messages are also holding content. Um, so this is what I mean by peer-to-peer -peer applications on a mesh physical infrastructure. Uh, does anyone have a question about this? Okay. So um, early on in 2017, um, we set out to build this thing uh, where people can install the node that, that has the physical hardware and also the software to do something like this. Um, and uh, the hardware that, that we choose, uh, one of the objectives is it has to be off the shelf. It, it should be easy to get, although it isn't really. Um, so we start out with the Raspberry Pi, but a Raspberry Pi is still not the cheapest thing uh, for the performance. So an orange Pi here is like about $10 American. And we found this adapter that, uh, that can mesh at the five gigahertz frequency for $6. So this is actually a uh, $20 note with the SD card. Um, we don't know if it'll work, but it's a good starting point. Um, and um, ambitiously, uh, we could use like uh, Armbian or Raspbian for something like this. But we want something that's very lightweight, that's kind of like uh, OpenWRT, but uh, has access to a lot of the applications that we're familiar with uh, through, through, through Debian. Uh, so Hamish set out to do this um, mesh orange project, uh, and, he, and he managed to build a full de uh, Debian stretch system on uh, less than 50 meg. And the whole thing can be run on RAM disk. Uh, which means what happens is when the, when the device boots, it just like loads the entire operating system onto, uh, onto RAM, and you can pop the SD card and it'll still operate fine. Um, it, later on I'll talk about it, but uh, it gave us a lot of nice features uh, afterwards. Um, the next part is uh, in order to build a mesh network, you need a mesh protocol. Uh, you need uh, the software to tell the nodes to relay and forest traffic uh, for one another. Uh, in, in mesh communities, we often talk about what protocol is your mesh network using. Uh, and I think this thing changed all the time. Uh, new protocols come out, uh, you, have, you have new versions. Uh, I don't know what is the best. Uh, why don't we build a platform where it's easy to prototype these things and expand upon? So this particular project uses CJDNS and a CJDNS-like protocol called Yadrezzle. I'm probably pronouncing that completely wrong. Uh, and then the application layer, these are the peer-to-peer -peer apps. We can use anything that's packaged into a Debian package for ARM and also uh, 
Docker containers. So all these cool tech that we talked about, like IPFS, SSB, uh, people are running on servers, we can just run it in a container, zipped up, so you can, you can flash it onto the SD card, and you don't even need internet to, to provision this thing. You boot it up, and then it unzips from that archive, and all of a sudden, you, you can form an autonomous mesh on an isolated island. Let's see what the hardware actually looks like. This is the orange pie and uh, the $6 adapter. So, <laughs> problems you run into. It's, uh, this adapter is pulling 40 megabit per second uh, for 20 seconds. After that, it heats up and it doesn't do that anymore. It drops to like less than a megabit per second. So first thing we do is obviously to put on a heat sink. Well, that didn't really help. So what Yurko did is started some active cooling mechanism. So you see the, the fan there. Uh, and then eventually they came up with a new design, which is the, the one in the middle with the two pigtails. Um, that one, I think the heat response is a bit better. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about the software. We want something that we can easily re-image. We can build the build build whole, whole image uh, in a very easy way. So if you're on a DB machine, it takes two lines to compile the whole thing. And then you end up with an image that you can directly flash onto the SD card. What if you don't have a DB machine? So we have a builder vagrant environment where you make three calls. We originally set out to only run this on a orange pie, but of course that list grows as the needs come up. So currently these are all the boards that Mesh Orange supports. And so these are some of the nodes that we have. Uh, one important thing is for it to be flexible because different mesh communities have different access to hardware. Uh, it would be nice if you don't have to rebuild, rebuild the image or uh, it's, it's drag and drop to reconfigure things. So how does it work to reconfigure these uh, net, network devices to say mesh or versus set up, a, set up a mesh link or set up as an access point? You do this, it's a standard systemd unit files. You would have, uh, you would have uh, one file that you would put into a targz archive. And what happens is when the system boots, before any application is run, it will unzip that archive into your file system and then systemd then reads it and then brings up the devices as specified. So in this one, we're saying anything that has the ATH9K driver, please bring it up in mesh point mode. And we're in Canada, and the SSID is Toronto Mesh Mesh Point. And then we specify the frequency and the bandwidth. Similarly, we can bring up a access point like that. Anything that's any wireless interface uh, that has an unspecified driver, which is like not the one we specified before, would be brought up as an access point at channel 11 with that password. And then uh, we started mixing other things into this, such as uh, Yoko put up an, uh, the Libra router antenna to uh, this $6 device. It turns out the, band, the, the speed is actually much faster when you have a good antenna. So one, the major use case for this note now is uh, the Toronto Mesh workshops that we did. Uh, so we're thinking about this tech as uh, something cool. But it's, it's useless if it's only cool. Uh, if no one can use it, you can't interface with other people, you can't, uh, people can imagine use cases for it then, it, then it's not very useful. Uh, so it's very important for us to build uh, 
the necessary literacy around this, uh, how, how, what does this enable, how to use it, uh, so people can actually touch this and relate to this. Uh, and, the, and the workshop was, uh, what was that project? Uh, I actually have some handouts that we, that we used for the workshop that if anyone wants, we can look at it after. Uh, and I have some demo notes here. I'm gonna bring them up during lunch. Uh, so all you have to do is connect to the name of the node. Uh, one of them is Chester, another one is Dundas. They're named after Toronto metro stops. Uh, and then you can SSH into them and like ping each other. Um, yeah, and the other thing I wanna ask is what do you think this could be useful for? I'm thinking about this as a, a platform where you can prototype, um, you can prototype different peer-to-peer -peer apps because you just have to package it up somehow or you can prototype different mesh networking protocols. Uh, and when new boards come out, you can just make a new build target and you can make a image for that. Uh, so yeah, my question is, do you have any use for this? Thank you. Okay, so maybe it's a reverse question period. We have one burning question, but maybe someone has one burning answer for sure. Ben. No question. Okay. okay. Um, so, oh wait, there is one. There is one at the back. I'm just purely curious about what uh, precipitates that slowdown in the throughput when it gets hot. Like, why does it? Uh, Why does it slow down and not just like I don't know, turn off or something like that? I have no idea. Does <laughs> it throttle itself maybe or something or? <laughs> maybe not. I, uh, I I have no idea. Maybe maybe it's preventing it from heating up too much. Yeah, and maybe. It's weird. It drops to less than a megabit and. It's like a person. Yeah. It just gets, it gets hot and it's like no. Yeah, we try so many things. I try put I try running the node in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>